Biggest misconception of you. What's the biggest misconception people think about you, but it's not true? I'm a hoe. Yeah, that's, that's the number one. I mean, because I get it. I'm a dancer, and my Instagram is risque, but um, I'm not a hoe. Like, it's, you know, it just doesn't happen. Like, it's not a lot of guys where I'm from that can be like that they had sex with me. I don't even like giving head, so I ain't sucking nobody's dicks. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I get that all the time that I'm a hoe. I mean, and it comes to a point where, like, girls in the club, because, you know, like, in the club when you are, I guess, like, hooking up with more guys, they'll come in and show love. I get love because I just am who I am, and I'm, I think I'm an entertainer, so people like to come and they'll see me, like, oh, we're coming to see Curly Red, and girls take that as, like, Sometimes I get jealous, like, oh, how does she? Because they know I'm not fucking the guys. Like, they know the guys. Like, you know the regulars, and they know I'm not fucking them. But they'll be like, you know, how come she gets, like, how come they always come here and see her and she ain't even doing this? And then they doing it. They, they fucking all these niggas, and they don't even care about them after two weeks later, and they still talking to me. So I feel like for me it's a respect thing. Like, when guys know, oh, she, I'm about my business, like, go to work, I'm about my money, and I go home, like, they fuck with that. Like, they don't. Like, they'll fuck a girl, but that only goes for so long before they're on to the next. And when you're that one girl that's like, nah, you ain't gonna try me, like, I'm about my money, they will always come back and show you love. So, that's my common thing, is I'm a hoe. I mean, everybody likes to look past the fact that I go to school, I'm in college, I become a lawyer, you know what I'm saying? Like, my job is just what I do for money, but that don't make me, you know. I mean, you can say whatever you want to say. I do get naked, but I mean... And no niggas ain't, like, niggas ain't fucking though, so I, I don't care about You can look, but you can't touch, so. What is your sexual orientation at this point? I'm straight. Not bisexual? Like no, no, I've never even kissed a girl. I don't want to. Now, you're straight, but you don't like doing oral sex. <laughs> no. I'm not good at it. Like, I, I don't, I don't, I have horrible gag reflexes. Like, even when I used to go to a dentist when I was younger, they used to tell me, like, I have a big mouth. I have really big teeth, bigger teeth than my mouth is supposed to hold, but I got a small throat. So like, I, it just doesn't, and I'm, I was never really interested in it, so I was never really good at it. And I hate saliva. Like I have like a, uh, like a weird thing about saliva. And, and you know, doing that is like saliva everywhere and it's just not something I like. But if I had a boyfriend, you know, and I was with my baby daddy, like I would do it with incentive. I would do it once in a while, but it's not something that like I would just, let me suck your dick. Like, mm. You would never hear me say that. Unless I'm made if I'm fucked up. Like, really fucked up. <laughs> you had a bad experience, too? I mean, I've thrown up. Like, uh, it's just not. Just, no, it just makes you tear up. You can't breathe. I don't know what I'm doing. Never. Like, it's not. I don't, I'm not, like, really. I'm not really a sexual person. Like, I lost my virginity when I was a senior in high school, and I didn't really want to anyways. So, and I, like, after that, sex wasn't really important to me. Like, talking to a guy to have sex wasn't. Like, I was an athlete, I was a tomboy. I was in school getting straight A's. I wasn't worried about having sex. And I grew up in a very strong Christian household. So, I mean, me becoming a dancer is already like, nobody could believe it. Like, how I was in high school, and middle school. Like, I didn't even curse till senior year. I said my first curse were in my ninth grade year. I said bitch, out loud for the first time. So, I mean, I was like very prude, and I, I didn't do anything, so I mean, now, you know, I'm a dancer, but as far as sex is concerned, I'm not really worried about that. I'd rather have, like, a strong connection with somebody, and then the rest comes after that. So. The interesting thing about this, though, is you being an exotic dancer, that's a very sexually natured job. I'm not sexual at all at work. It's okay. So there's, like, there's differences. Okay. You have strippers, dancers, entertainers. There's three levels. Okay. So strippers are just the girls who, like, I would call a stripper, my term, a stripper is a girl who actually likes going to the club, likes getting naked, likes using her body, like, to take advantage of guys. Like, they'll be touching on themselves. They'll be letting guys put their fingers up their vaginas. Like, they'll be fucking in the back, sucking dick. Those are strippers. Like, just, they don't give a fuck. Like, they're in their 30s, 40s, still in the club, fucking niggas for money. Don't know what they do with their money. That's a stripper. A dancer is the next step up. It's a girl who has a little bit more respect for herself, and she's a dancer. Like, she knows how to twerk. You know what I'm saying? She dances. She knows how to work the floor. She knows how to talk to guys. Might go to the back, might not. You never know. And then you have the entertainers. Like, entertainers are the girls you can sell in the club strictly about their money. Like, if you try to touch me inappropriately, I will smack your hand. Like, I, I've had to argue with guys several times, like, don't touch me like that. Like, you can tell when I'm dancing, I'm not, I enjoy what I'm doing. So I have a smile on my face. I do a lot of pole tricks. I do 
fire on my feet. I jump off the stage. I do flips. I'd like to make people go, wow, like, oh, my gosh, like, look at this little girl. And I just love to, like, dance and put a smile on people's face. Like, if you're going to take your hard money and you're coming to the club, I'm not just going to stand there and just, I barely have an ass. Like, I have an ass. It's little. You know, I think it's little. So it's like, I can't just sit there and, like, shake a butt cheek. Like, I got to do a handstand. So I got to make you throw your money. Like, make it worth it. Like, I, that's how I am. So it's like, I'm not sexy at all on stage. Like, I see girls and they're very sexual, you know, and they have, like, that look. Or they'll, I me, I'm like a monster on the stage. Like, my hair is everywhere. Like, I'm flying from one end to the other. It's like, I'm like an acrobat. I don't even... I don't even remember that I'm naked most of the time because I'm too busy dancing and stuff. And it's like, you're just looking at what I'm doing besides actually like, oh, look at her vagina. Like, it's, it's like totally opposite. I'm doing other stuff that you don't even, I don't even feel like I'm naked anymore certain times I'm dancing. Now, when it's uncomfortable and I'm at like a white club and like the guys are staring at you and I'll get uncomfortable still because at the end of the day, like I'm not like that. And nobody wants to have somebody touching all over them that you don't want touching on you. So that's why I keep it like entertainment and I'm just dancing, get my little money and I'm on to the next. So you know, I'm not sexual. Like it can be sexual, but then it cannot be sexual. It just depends on the girl. And anytime you go to the strip club, you'll be able to sell like, I can tell that girl, you know, you can just watch and you can see how every, me, I'm here, 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 here. I'm everywhere, just dancing on to the next. So, you know. Craziest rumor you heard about yourself? Um, hmm. Uh, well, I told you about the back page stuff. I knew that, like, I'm selling pussy. And then um, one time I did hear that I was giving herpes to everybody in Broward County. I think that would be like, you know, I, was, I was dying when I heard that one. But yeah, a guy called me and told me there were some, there were some boys and girls at a, um, a pool place talking about Curly Red giving everybody in Broward County herpes. That was interesting. Did you uh, confront that person, confront that rumor? No, nah, I mean, I, I talked to the guy and I was like, I was really, I was always really mad about it. Like, I'm, I'm about to go on Instagram, it's not right now. He's like, just ignore it. At the end of the day, I don't have it. So I don't really have to go make a public statement about it. I'm a dancer. Like, I don't even know how someone can have vaginal, like, general herpes and be a dancer. Like, you will see shit. Like, it won't look nice. Like, but I mean, I did. Obviously, I have been tested because stuff be spreading real weird a while. So, um, you know, I've, I've definitely been tested. And I did put my results when I did get tested for everything to, to clear the air. But I didn't specifically address the rumor. I just posted it and be like, show me the Carfax. Mm. But, I mean, like, I'm, like I said, I don't be out there, like, really fucking around. So it's like, I'll be with one guy, but it's up to that guy if they're going to be honest and only with me. That's the only way I'll catch something is if they go out and do something and I don't know what, and they go and bring it back to me. Other than me going and catching it, uh, I've never, never been my thing. And on the back page thing, you said it so fast, uh, I want to just be clear. Uh, it was a segment we had done earlier where you said that people would use your images of you on back page, but it's not really you posting yeah. on back page and things of that nature. Don't get fooled. Curly Red does not sell pussy. <laughs> like, it doesn't happen. And they use my pictures everywhere. California, Detroit, here, Miami. I'm everywhere. That STD rumor is not something to joke around with. Um, rumors such as that, that can break people down. Yeah, did, I mean. Did that break you down at all or no? I only had one instance where it really offended me because it was a girl who I knew since I first started working and she has known me, she knows my son and my baby daddy, whatever. She's just known me since I basically growing up in the industry. And she brought it up to my attention, but she was kind of doing it in a way like, oh, if you are doing this, just let me know. Like, I'll be there for you. And I'm like, it's not me. She's like, well, you don't have to lie to me. And she just kept like, you don't have to lie to me. You can tell me. I'm like, girl, that is not me. How many times I tell you that? So I feel like as though when it comes to people who know me, you should know. Don't bring no foolishness to that. Like my way, you know, damn well, that's not me. So that's the only time it offends me. With somebody who doesn't know me, it is what it is. Like I, people come to the club and oh, look at this. I'd be like, call it. I just tell them, like, call it, book them. See who it is. Like, it's not me. So I, I don't have to, I know who I am in certain aspects to where I'm confident enough that I don't care. People say I have herpes and I don't care. Because at the end of the day, anybody who's ever going to try to come into my life and fuck with me, they're going to know, oh, this bitch don't have shit. Like, she ain't, she ain't like that. Because it takes guys, like, they hear a lot of stuff about me. So any guy who already previously knows, like, or seen me on Instagram, they might already have in their head, oh, she's like this, that, and a third. But... All you got to do is go on one date with me, and I shut everything down. And it's like, you, know, you already know who I am because I'm, I'm an open book. I'm going to let you know straight up how I am when we first go out. Is there a question people ask of you you hate to answer? 
Um, Something you can't stand. No, not really. I hate when people ask me for nudes. Like, it's not happening. <laughs> Stop asking me for nudes. Stop asking to have sex for money. That's the only thing that bothers me the most. But, I mean, I get it. It's my image, though. It is what it is. If people want to see you nude, they can come to the club. Yeah, so I always say, like, just come see me at the club. I've seen some exotic dancers that have, like, an OnlyFans yeah. page and stuff like that. You also have that as well no, or no? No, no, no. I can't do that webcam stuff. Not I mean, if it. it feels something I could just, I heard there's something that, there's things you can just go on live and just talk and be yourself, yeah, but to like that webcam stuff, nah, I can't, I would never do nothing like that. I feel like the club, yeah, is bad enough, you're like naked, but one, you can't really have phones like that out, so not like people are actually like recording me and they go all over the internet, and two, it's just different, like it's a different setting, it's like it's okay to be naked in the strip club, you know what I'm saying, but then like to be in your bed like masturbating online, anybody can be watching you, like that's kind of, that's, that's crazy, like, uh, no. You do show your, uh, your, your little machine though off. Oh yeah, my boyfriend. <laughs> because that, that's like, I show that off to show, like, to let people know that I don't give a fuck about fucking a nigga. I don't give a damn about that because I got a vibrator and if I ever feel like I'm horny, I'm going to use it and fall asleep and that's the end of my night. So I like to show it off because, I mean, I don't do dildos. Like, I don't do nothing that goes in me. But I like to show off my vibrator because it just shows, like, I don't need you niggas. At the end of the day, that's what that means to me and that's why I show it off a lot. So when it comes to questions, generally speaking, you're an open book. Is that safe to say or no? Yeah. Okay. I'll answer anything. Do you care what people think of you yes. at this point? My friends hate it. I'm very caring about what people say about me. I feel as though because, I don't know, uh, especially when it's like negative and people have a certain, you know, what stereotype of me, I always want to like clear it. Cause I don't, I don't want to be around someone who thinks I'm like this, but I'm not. So I'm very caring what people say. And that's one of my main like downfalls. I shouldn't care. But I feel like when I don't care about people, people say, I'm arrogant, I'm confident, I'm stuck up, and I'm not humble. Because at, at work, I don't even talk to girls like that at work. I, I get in there and get out, and girls take that as I'm being arrogant or I'm not friendly. I think I'm all that, and it's just like I just don't really have time to be when I'm more on track. I don't drink, I don't smoke, especially not at work. So it's like I'm there for, like, one thing. But, I mean, I do care about what people say about me because it hurts your feelings and people have, like, a certain opinion about you that's not really true. And it can also lead to health issues. It can lead to a certain level of stress. It can lead to anxiety. It can lead to depression. Worst case, suicidal thoughts on the thought of what other people think about you. Uh, have you faced any of these obstacles yourself? Um, not suicidal thoughts, but I did have to recently, I would say in March, I think, in March, I had to take a break off Instagram and I had um, booked a penthouse in Miami and I got off the internet for two days because I was going through a lot of drama at my job. A lot of the girls talking smack about me and then they were trying to fight me and then I had a lot of stuff going on on Instagram. I don't know what happened, like I just started booming on Instagram around that time. So it was like a lot of people come and they were talking a whole bunch of shit about me. So I literally had to turn my phone off. I took my son, I took some of my friends and I was like, we need to come to Miami because I was stressed out. I was so stressed and I was like, I just need to get away. So I got off my phone for two days and I just went to a penthouse and I relaxed but it happens it happens you just like now I'm starting to learn not to look so much into it you know what I'm saying? I can just put my phone down if anything and I'll just I don't really argue as much as I used to I used to be on my Instagram like arguing back and forth but I kind of just like people say a lot of stuff to be seen though at the end of the day a lot of people say something rude to me or something nasty just so I reply because then they'll be like oh my gosh you actually replied I love you so much so it's like you just gotta ignore a lot of it Never sought counseling, never sought therapy, never sought medication? No, not for my Instagram. Have I seen a therapist and psychiatrist? Yes. I grew up in anger management. Oh. And I still feel like to this day I need to go see a psychiatrist because, um, you know, I've been through stuff in my life and I'm emotionally unstable, I feel like. Uh, I am a Gemini. I don't think it has anything to do with my horoscope, but... Um, I'm like a weird, like roller coaster. Nothing's wrong with me mentally, though. I'm, I'm cool, but, um, yeah, I've, I've grown up in psychiatrists. So my parents always felt like I need to have one to release whatever. I, I, I don't know. So maybe a future visit here. Huh? Maybe a future visit to a psychiatrist, maybe. Yeah, soon. I, like, I just told my mom like, a couple weeks ago I want to go back to a psychiatrist, even if there's something like really, really wrong. Is, is good. 
it's just good to talk to someone who's unbiased. Because you can talk to friends, but they'll have something to say, and they know you, and they'll tell you what you already know you're supposed to do. You know, But a psychiatrist who are, like, really unbiased, they just sit and listen. So it's, like, no point of... I used to think it was, like, no point of going to them because they just sit and listen. And then they'd be talking to me about their problems. And I don't know how that helps me at all, but... Um, yeah, I, I I used to live in Oregon and when I was a junior in high school. It was the worst year of my life. So that's that's when I really started having to go see a psychiatrist. I dealt with a lot in Oregon. That was something you took upon yourself or parents suggested? Mm, my, or? Mm, my parents made me do it. I, I did it when I was younger. I did anger management when I was in middle school. But like a psychiatrist, psychiatrist happened when I was in a junior high school. What are your keys to success? What are some things that make you successful at this point? Um, well, one, having faith. Um, I, I'm a Christian, and, you know, I, I'm a dancer, and my dad's a pastor, and it's like in so many different contrasts and conflicts of interest in these. But at the end of the day, um, that's my religion, and I know the way, and I, I definitely get a lot of um, push-pull, like, I'll get excited to go to work and make money, but then in the back of my head, I know I'm not supposed to be, like, I know that's not the way God wants me to live. So, but my first main thing is just trusting the Lord. I just feel like, like, he knows my heart and he knows where I want to go. And so I think the first thing is just having faith. That's the first thing is having faith. And then I'm very dedicated. Like, whatever I say I'm going to do, I'm going to do, and I'm going to get good at it. So when it came to dancing, I used to suck at dancing. Like, girls used to make fun of me. I was very much smaller than I am now, but I got a little thicker after the baby, after I had my son. But um, I used to dance like a white girl, and I couldn't do any poetry tricks, nothing. And what I said was, I'm going to watch these girls in the club who do better than me, and I'm going to watch, I'm going to learn. Instead of hating on them like the girls do for me, I just watch them. And then I surpassed. And the same thing with music. When I first started doing music, because there's a big difference between my music two months ago and my music now today. But it's like, okay, I'm going to start something, and I'm just going to keep practicing, keep practicing, keep practicing, keep practicing, and I'm going to get better at it. Because whatever I do, I need to do it to the best of my abilities. So faith, dedication, and just having a, having a system, you know, of family, love, trust, all that. You know what I'm saying? And you're going to have bad times. Everybody, has, everybody goes through it. But at the end of the day, you got to keep pushing.